Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to speak about bananas, surprisingly. Um, yeah, and, and particularly about how bananas could actually help us to address vitamin A deficiencies. Um, also taking into consideration all, you know, we talked about the variability and the diversity we have seen. There may actually be opportunities here. If you look at this uh, figure here, um, you see the dark greens where we have major issues and concerns around uh, vitamin A deficiency. Globally, it affects uh, 500 million children every year. Uh, many of these children also die prematurely because their immune system is affected by that deficiency. So it's, it's, it's a global issue, and there are different ways of addressing it, but one key element is to see, particularly in areas where bananas are an important crop, how bananas could contribute towards addressing some of these deficiencies. And so you see that we have clear opportunities, particularly in, in South and Southeast Asia, but also in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Diversity, you have, uh, here are some pictures of, of uh, diverse uh, bunches of different bananas, uh, different uh, varieties, cultivars. Um, and the question is, of these varieties, are there some that could potentially be of interest in terms of uh, having higher levels of, of vitamin A? Um, we know, as you know here, I brought my prop along. This is the what you saw in the greenhouse, the Cavendish banana. Um, over 40%, we heard already of the global production is of this, uh, of this uh, or a set of these varieties, the Cavendish subgroup. And uh, nevertheless, very low in vitamin A. Um, are there opportunities in some of the other bananas? That is the question. And as we look and start looking across globally, and particularly in the Pacific, there are uh, very uh, important varieties there that are very rich in vitamin A. So how do we proceed in trying to figure this out and look at the opportunities that bananas might uh, provide? So in, um, the first step is really screening of the bananas to see uh, what is their vitamin A content? And uh, as you see in this graph, uh, with the, uh, on one axis you, you see the, the uh, level of vitamin A, and on the others you see the different types of, uh, of uh, banana varieties. Over 400 bananas were screened, and uh, this work was actually done here in Leuven. Uh, and if you look at the Cav uh, Cavendish uh, types, uh, the green there, very low uh, practically negligible levels of vitamin A. As you go, and, and I'm, we're specifically focusing here on East Africa as an, as an opportunity that we were figuring out, if you look at the East African highland bananas, somewhat better. There is some level of vitamin A in there, but still significantly lower than in some of the varieties that, that we were screening. And if you look at this uh, particular variety from the Pacific, the Utinjap, um, very high level of vitamin A. So clearly this, this variation is huge, and the question is how can we exploit this? So step two, we need to do some field testing based on the best information we have and, and the background information we have on, on the accessions. Uh, a subset of these uh, varieties and cultivars were uh, identified, particularly for East and Central African countries, because as you heard earlier, uh, very important for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the nutrition of the people, for food security, be, being a staple food for the people in, in this region. Uh, so 10 cultivars, mainly from the Asia-Pacific region, one of them actually came from West Africa, were tested together with local cultivars in two countries, in Burundi and Eastern uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, what are the properties of the ones that were selected uh, in terms of vitamin A? For a child under five years, um, a child would need to eat only half to one banana finger of the introduced cultivars to meet the daily vitamin A needs. 
whereas to the local varieties that we were comparing them to, you would need five or more uh, bananas of the local varieties to reach the same level of uh, meeting the needs of these uh, children. Um, so the first step is to re really look at the agronomic performance. If they don't grow well, if the farmers uh, don't like them in the field, then of course we have a problem right up front. Uh, so one of the things was looking at the agronomic features of these varieties, uh, and five of them, uh, actually, I, uh, five out of the ten were actually varieties that performed quite well in the uh, growing environment in the regions uh, of uh, Burundi and eastern Cong DRC Congo. Um, in the meantime, we're, we've added additional varieties, cultivars, to, to look at uh, performance as well beyond the ten initial ones. Then step three, somebody asked uh, in our group in one of the stops about uh, consumer preference, a clearly critical element if we want to introduce a new variety into a region, into the diets of people. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's looking at the ease of preparation, it's, uh, it's about uh, the taste, it's about the appearance. Um, so these tests were done. Uh, in terms of the taste test, but also uh, not just the taste, but also how it feels in the mouth uh, to the consumers. Uh, and, and as you see on the picture on the left side, uh, the dessert bananas were tested in one way, directly um, uh, um, tasting them. And on the right side, you see where the bananas were actually cooked and prepared with recipes that people locally would normally uh, prepare bananas um, with. And therefore, these, that information was collected. And the local varieties were clearly preferred by the, by, the, uh, by the consumers. But four of the cultivars were actually very close to the local cultivars, quite acceptable to the people. So now we have cultivars identified that actually grow quite well, that are comparable also from a consumer preference point of view. Uh, for uh, uh, from a preparation point of view, um, the what I wanted to tell you here was that, for example, the apantu is a, is a plantain variety from Ghana. The bira is from uh, is a cooking variety from the from uh, PNG Papua New Guinea. Uh, the lahi is uh, basically a cooking banana from ha Hawaii. Uh, and the lai is a dessert banana from Thailand. So you can see these were bananas coming from all over the place that are being assessed and that are being preferred and comparable with the local cultivars. Step four, we need to start, as we get this knowledge and as we identify this, we need to start disseminating uh, this information to farmers, disseminating the planting material providing training, raising awareness about these bananas, specifically related to the vitamin A content and what contribution they can make to uh, children's health. Uh, so we started in Burundi and the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, working with 800 farmers. Then uh, we were also community resource persons were trained and reaching out to nearly 10,000 farmers uh, in the period of 20, uh, 2014 to 16. In the second phase now, we have been expanding to Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda as well, uh, with an initial uh, engagement with an additional 1,500 men and women farmers. And we now have plans to, over the next three, four years, with the appropriate uh, support of resources, uh, a larger scaling across five countries um, in the region, beyond the countries uh, identified, but also a broader scaling within these countries, reaching one million farmers and uh, roughly meaning five million dependents in these uh, households, farming households. And the total investment we estimate uh, to, to be able to do that is about uh, two dollars uh, per family member. So not a lot of money to reach a lot of uh, farms, a lot of uh, households, and, uh, and improving their, um, their vitamin A consumption uh, since banana is such an important crop in this region. And going back to why we're here today, it's, these varieties have been introduced, as I said, many of them came from the Pacific region 
into East Africa. They pass through the ITC uh, because they need to be screened for diseases, for viruses, as we heard. Uh, they need to be cleaned up. They need to be identified. They need to be characterized. And then they can be moved on and multiplied and tested uh, as, we, uh, as we saw in, in the previous slides. And so the I, sorry about that. Uh, so the ITC plays a critical role in moving the cultivars and varieties from one region through the ITC back into a new region, for example, East, uh, East Africa, where there are new opportunities for consumption and addressing uh, specifically the uh, vitamin A deficiency problem we face there. And therefore, you see these ITC numbers across all of these uh, varieties that have been moved. With that, thank you very much. An example of how the ITC has been very helpful and is continuing to address real problems and issues on the ground faced by farmers and their communities. Thank you. Thank you.